We're really pleased to be here and to share some information about our program. Um, I want to introduce our speakers. Uh, I'm Elizabeth Borst. As Michael said, I'm, I work with an organization called Virginia Community Food Connections. We uh, work with farmers markets in uh, the Fredericksburg region to do SNAP and Virginia Fresh Match. And I'm also a co-lead in the Virginia Fresh Match Network, along with my partner, Maureen McNamara-Best. Maureen, you want to do a little introduction? Hi, I'm Maureen Best. Uh, I'm director of LEAP, Local Environmental Agriculture Project, based out of Roanoke, Virginia. And uh, similar to Elizabeth, we're a local food-based organization, farmers markets and food access work in a food hub. Uh, and then I'm also co-lead of Virginia Fresh Match. And finally, John Henry. Hi, I'm John Henry and I'm the owner of the John Henry General Store and we're a Fresh Match uh, site uh, grocery store in Newmarket, Virginia. Great. Well, we're so pleased to, um, to talk with you all today and we'll just jump right in. Um, what we're going to talk about today, uh, as you know, is, is SNAP, um, the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, formerly known as Food Stamps. Um, and the Virginia Fresh Match program that doubles the value of SNAP uh, for fruits and vegetables. So I'm gonna advance the slides and Maureen, I'm gonna go from there, thank you. Elizabeth, um, have you shared your screen? I don't see it, I just see you. Oh dear, okay. Uh, I thought we were fully in screen share mode. Sorry, we tested this. Okay. Mark, you got any advice here? Uh, if you just go or go hit the uh, green button on the bottom and then select the PowerPoint window. Sorry, I've done this. Are you, there we go. Yeah, there we go. And then go to uh, play from the start. Yeah, there we go. All right, perfect. Thank you. Thank you for letting me know. All right, here we go. Thanks everyone. It feels like we should have Zoom and other platform forward and backward now. Uh, and yet things still happen and it's okay. Um, so I, I just wanted to introduce kind of the, the one of the problems challenges that Virginia Match really works to try and address. Um, there's especially in COVID um, food insecurity, which means, you know, which means reliable consistent access. People have reliable consistent access and they know where the next meal is coming from um, is a challenge in Virginia, especially for families with kids. Um, it is increasing nationally. It's increasing in Virginia. Uh, so both in terms of um, the number of people and also the percentage. And so one method that exists within the federal government and in Virginia to try to address food insecurity is SNAP, the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program. Uh, a lot of times people talk about it as food stamps. Um, so SNAP is one way to try and make um, individuals and families have less food insecurity. Um, and that SNAP enrollment is also increasing. Um, and one of the things that um, with people who are on really tight food budgets, one of the challenges is being able to afford fruits and vegetables. Um, it's often out of reach for uh, limited resource families. And so that is not only for SNAP um, individuals and families uh, who participate in SNAP, but also anyone else who's limited resource. And another challenge um, uh, right now is that a lot of small businesses, family farmers, neighborhood retail outlets, you know, are also struggling to make ends meet, um, which also impacts food access. Um, <clears throat> next slide. And so um, if you haven't checked out the Virginia Roadmap to End Hunger, uh, I encourage you to. It's something that was uh, released this fall. Uh, uh, Virginia Department of Agriculture and Feed VA and um, a lot of other partners, the whole coalition, who 
spent a long time really trying to say, okay, in Virginia, food access is a challenge. Um, there are families and individuals that um, are experiencing hunger on a regular basis. What can we do? And so there are a lot of strategies within this. You can find it all on uh, feedva.org, that website. Um, and one of the ones that we'll talk about today are nutrition incentives like Virginia Fresh Match. So what a nutrition incentive does, it helps incentivize um, people to purchase healthy foods and also by making them more affordable. Next slide. Uh, so Virginia Fresh Match does, it is an incentive program specifically for SNAP. And so we're trying to increase consumer purchasing power so that individuals and families with tight food budgets are able to bring home more fruits and vegetables. Um, we do this through a lot of different ways. Um, well, I guess I'll up and say that, you know, because of where Virginia Fresh Match started at farmer's markets, um, we are we also try as much as we possibly can to prioritize that being locally regionally virginia grown fruits and vegetables um and that really depends on what part of the state you're in in terms of of how people define that but the the focus is on um uh, also supporting local food systems small businesses uh, family farmers uh and not just any fruits and vegetables but we support all fruits and vegetables. So it's kind of that, that weird space. Um, so when we talk about food access, there, it's one of those things that, that is a pretty common term, but we, we don't all use it the same way. But food access, um, generally speaking, and then specifically to Virginia Fresh Match, what we're trying to do is we're trying to address three components of food access which includes proximity, affordability, and education. And so just because they're, just because someone lives in a neighborhood where there's a store doesn't mean that they can afford it or that they know what to do with fruits and vegetables, have the tools to do that. Uh, on the flip side, um, there are a lot of people who don't even have any um, easy to um, get to stores or farm stands or farmers markets or mobile markets within their community. So Virginia Fresh Match tries to support the outlets and make the food affordable. And then we work closely with SnapEd uh, and other education providers to also make sure that people understand and know what to do with food so it doesn't just rot in a fridge or on a counter. Next slide. And so for customers, the way that it looks is that it's half off or it's a um, like two for one program. At the farmer's market, as you can see in the, the bottom center, Virginia Fresh Match is largely operated through a token system where someone who has SNAP EBT goes to the market manager, runs their EBT, which is, um, you know, is, is a debit card that gets preloaded every year every month based on um, the allowable balance that's determined by the Department of Social Services and people's income. And so an amount gets dead from it and they receive tokens, say for if they run $20 on the card, they get $20 in tokens and then they get an additional $20 in Virginia Fresh Match tokens. And then they take the tokens and they go to every vendor and they um, use them like cash and then the markets reimburse the vendors for the tokens that have been collected. At a grocery store or like John Henry's general store or farm stand or mobile market, just a half off discount. So if the price is $2, then they would just be charged $1 for it. Next slide. In terms of how Virginia Fresh Match works, uh, we started in, um, in farmer's markets and it's been very grassroots and we've organized ourselves uh, into regions. So you can see the eight regions there. Each region has a regional lead that works with all the outlets in that region. And then Elizabeth and I, um, are on the state level trying to make sure that everything goes smoothly. Um, so, so we are the 
the state that's the hub and then all the spokes are the regions and then each partner outlet has flexibility in terms of how to implement that program within the, the parameters that are tied to our, our funding in terms of restriction. Next slide. And so what Virginia Fresh Match, um, you know, we are trying to take a systems approach to food, to food access, to food insecurity. Uh, and, you know, for that reason, we are, it's not just any food, but we really are prioritizing local food, uh, working with local farmers and food businesses that are, that are choosing to and selling to local communities so that we're able to not only impact food insecurity, but we can also impact local economies um, to support, <clears throat> uh, you know, local economies and local farmers and local food-based businesses. Next slide. Elizabeth, it's all you. Thanks, Maureen. Um, yeah, so the, uh, with, with sort of that setup, um, you know, our impacts have grown over the years. As Maureen said, we're really a grassroots group, um, markets uh, and, and a few, the retail outlets across the state who've joined together to work on this program. Um, in 2019, we worked uh, with 532 farmers um, who were selling uh, fresh produce to SNAP shoppers. And you know we really can't overstate the importance of the farmers in this equation. Um, you know our customers really want to spend money with <laughs> with local businesses, and and they particularly in, uh, like to to work with local farmers. They learn where their food comes from. Um, they build that connection, and of course that money is staying in the local economy. So not only are we providing uh, access to the SNAP. Um, benefits at a farmer's market, let's say, um, which wouldn't happen unless, you know, a, an action is taken to do that. Otherwise, people can't spend their, their benefit dollars there. But then we're bringing in that doubling the match um, incentives, which, you know, is, is more money in the pockets of farmers. So uh, farmers are, are, are important <laughs> to this program, absolutely. Um, we work with 75 part partner outlets, 71 farmer's markets, and four neighborhood grocery stores. Um, and as Maureen said, we, we've kind of grown up in the farmer's market business, but, but we recognize that in many communities, um, you know, it's a farm stand, it's a, it's a, a small grocery store, it's a mobile market um, where, where food can be uh, most accessible to people in that community. Um, so we worked with uh, 6,800 shoppers, spent their SNAP funds um, at, at our partner outlets um, over 20,000 times and we generated about 332,000 in SNAP and SNAP match at those par partner outlets. Um, those numbers are gonna continue to grow and we are excited about, um, you know, ha having built a structure that enables our partners to, to run these programs at the local level. So really, how does it work um, from, from a, the perspective of somebody who, who's interested in, in participating um, you would identify yourself uh, as a retail outlet, a farmer's market, et cetera, um, and you would decide that you wanted to accept SNAP. Um, and that is a process in and of itself. Um, you have to apply to the USDA Food and Nutrition Service to become an authorized SNAP retailer. Um, once, once you've taken that step, uh, then we, we welcome um, folks who are interested in talking with Virginia Fresh Match to learn how they can offer an additional incentive on top of SNAP. Um, and you, again, you can look at it as an incentive on top or as a discount model, depending on, on how it, it is structured. Um, sometimes additional funding is needed to help, uh, help these programs get off the ground. And so that, again, is, is uh, something that the, the operator would, would work on within their own community. Uh, and then the next step is really, you know, starting to offer the program and, and integrating, you know, SNAP and Virginia Fresh Match into the way your, your, um, your outlet works. Uh, and really, this is very important, working with the community uh, on outreach strategies to make sure that people know they can use their benefits at your site. Um, it's, it, it's, a, it's really true. You can build it um, and, and they will come, but they have to know that, that you're there. And that is a, an ongoing 
um, challenge. The SNAP population uh, is fluid and flexible. It changes all the time. Uh, so really working within your community to organizations that are connected to those clients is, is really essential for these programs to be, to be successful. Um, you'll be actively running your program, again, in that discount um, model, reimbursing uh, vendors or being as a vendor potentially being reimbursed yourself. Um, and then Im important is, is collecting data. We do, we are very data centric. Um, we, we have a lot of reporting we have to do to our funders, um, but, but we're always trying to, to refine and improve the program. And, and that is something um, that the network is, is especially focused on. Um, you know, this is hard work to do by yourself. So we, the, the network has, has created, uh, you know, kind of a, a, a group of, of folks doing it who can bounce ideas off each other. Um, we provide a, a number of resources uh, to our partners, um, but mostly it's about peer to peer. And, and, you know, there's fascinating, interesting, great things going on in all parts of the state, um, but it's pretty difficult for people to always know, you know, what's working somewhere and what, el what, what else is going on. So having a network, a place where people can come together has been um, really important and especially important during COVID for us to um, be able to, to keep these programs going. It, it would have been, um, you know, it, it could have been that, that we couldn't continue to run these programs with all of the barriers and restrictions in place, but we have a very dedicated group of folks who have worked around a lot of those barriers to, to continue to provide access within their community. And we are uh, grateful to be able to, to support that work because we do it ourselves too, we're that, that we're both actively involved with, um, with running programs. So we, we kind of get to see it from both sides. Um, I mentioned some of the ways that, uh, that markets and, and partners have had to pivot around COVID-19. Um, you know, at the beginning of the season, it was just not clear that things were going to open at all. Um, as, you know, as, as we were able to progress a little bit, we, we, again, were working with our partners to make sure that they had all the tools they needed to continue to make food access a priority. Uh, so we lifted the cap on the incentives. Um, each um, outlet can, can really determine their own, sort of their own cap, how much they're willing to match. But, um, you know, instead of, of there being a cap to say, you can only um, offer up to, let's say up to a $50 match. Uh, we, we removed that at the state level. So folks had even more flexibility and we have seen tremendous impact from that. Um, lots of customers spending the maximum amount on their SNAP to get that maximum amount of incentive so they can bring home more fruits and vegetables for their family. Um, we also worked uh, quickly again um, to accept uh, pandemic EBT and let as many folks as we could know that that was welcome at our outlets. Pandemic EBT um, was a, one of the many efforts to uh, give families more spending power uh, uh, throughout this crisis. Um, so families with children in school received um, a, pan uh, a pandemic EBT card to replace meals that they would have otherwise gotten at school. Um, and, and there was a lot of work done uh, as well to just be able to, to meet the, the needs of, of these um, much higher SNAP enrollments. A lot of us had to hire new staff uh, and, and really just set, set up things differently to be able to accommodate um, this growing need. We also applied for and obtained some national funding, which we were able to share with our partners. Um, there was a lot of expenses that went into, into COVID management. Um, just, just think of a lot of police tape and hand sanitizer. So we were able to, to give, uh, give, give back something to our partners so they could cover some of those costs. Um, and, and also really importantly, we, we worked so closely with our, our partners to strategize and, and develop new strategies to help them meet these changing needs. Uh, we had initially, we had weekly calls and then um, by, by monthly and, and now monthly calls to really focus on the challenges that, that folks were having and share those great resources and information amongst our partners. Um, and the impact has been has been very large. Um, you know, I, we we talked about the, the growth in in food insecurity and, and the higher need. Um, we're really seeing how these programs are are jumping in and, and making a big difference. Um, it, uh, in a couple of of retail grocery um, outlets, uh, the Roanoke Co-op uh, increased their average discount by ninety six percent. 
um, from February to August and the friendly city co-op increased theirs from 150%. Um, and, and customers were spending significantly more money uh, at the Friendly City Co-op. They were spending 15% more than they, uh, than they normally did um, for, just for the higher level discount. And at farmers markets, I mean, we've seen just explosive growth with those markets that have been able to, to continue offering the food access programs. Um, Leap Mobile Market saw a 281% increase. Um, Abington Farmers Market, an 88% increase. And you know, in Central Virginia, we've seen almost a 70% increase in usage uh, and, and also a much higher dollar values um, that, that folks are spending because the need is, is really there. And once families figure this out, it's sort of that, that aha moment where, oh, okay, I get this. Somebody's gonna give me uh, the opportunity to, to, to get um, additional healthy fruits and vegetables. And, um, so a lot we, we have, you know, we obviously serve many new customers, but we also have very dedicated longtime customers that, that come back again and again and again. This season in particular, it's been a lot of, um, of new first time SNAP users who've never been on a benefits program before. And that's been very challenging. Um, and we, we hear from these folks, we, we gather a lot a lot of data, as I mentioned, um, particularly stories and, and, and customer testimonials. I'll just give you a second to, to read through these rather than read them to you. And you'll see these testimonials um, end with a, a, a farmer quote. Um, one of one of the farmers I've worked with, Alfredo uh, from Little Green Farm. You know, he's he's a real proponent of the program because, particularly this year, those the, the token income that they got um, was significant and very important in a year of of decreased sales. So, um, we know that our farmers are are, are active partners in this and. Um, again, a, and a, and a very important component to, to the whole program in terms of providing that access to affordable food. So where are we now? Um, we are looking at a number of, of growth opportunities and, and uh, new directions. Um, we're planning to increase, to continue to work to increase the capacity of our network and outlets. You know, uh, farmers markets are very often um, small, and uh, about a third of them in Virginia are run by volunteers. So bringing in a new, a new sort of line of business like this can be very challenging. So a lot of the work that, that we all do collectively is about helping those, um, our partners have, have the capacity to do, uh, to do the incentive work. We're always working to expand our outreach to end users. Um, building that program awareness and usage is just critical. Uh, to making sure that folks have access to these healthy fruits and vegetables at an affordable price. So that's always a big focus. Um, kind of going forward, we're really working hard to, to secure some sustainable funding for these programs um, and, and also for additional um, other healthy food incentives. Once you have the infrastructure in place to offer incentives, you can do a great deal. Um, lots of different types of incentives are, are out there. Um, WIC incentives, senior incentives, Medicaid, veterans, um, you know, you can think of a lot of populations in your own community that, that could benefit from uh, some additional encouragement to purchase healthy food. So, um, but in terms of the sustainable funding, we have, uh, we currently have a federal grant that is providing 100% of our SNAP incentives. Um, we have that, that funding secured through May of 2022 and um, we're, we're working with lots of partners within the state to make sure that that um, continues beyond the end of the federal grant. And one of the, the other key things we really are focused on is it making sure that this is not ever thought of as a standalone program. These, these programs, any food insecurity program really works so, it's so important that it be thought of in terms of, of how it works within the local community. Um, you know, these are, these are all, sort of things that ladder on top of each other. So uh, making sure that, that we're fully integrated into, into local, regional and state programs um, is, is, is very important and, and makes these programs stronger because they're working in partnership rather than trying to be a standalone solution. 
So we're gonna um, ask John Henry to, to give us some information about his store and his experience working with Virginia Fresh Match. And then we're gonna open this up for your questions and thoughts and discussion. John. Hi, so I'm John Henry. Uh, I'm the proprietor of John Henry General Store. And just for background about the store, um, we're located in Newmarket, which is in Shenandoah County on the south end, um, right above the north end of Rockingham County. Um, and we're kind of at the intersection of some major highways of 81, Route 11, and uh, 211. Um, so that Newmarket used to be called Crossroads as a town. And it really is um, because we're kind of in between three different counties. Um, with varying populations and socio-demographics. Um, but we actually started accepting EBT, I think it was back in January of 2020. Um, and as part of that, we kind of just built out a full relationship on EBT um, to start doing uh, the uh, Virginia Family Nutrition Program. And then from there, we uh, worked with uh, Lee to start doing the Fresh Match as the fourth uh, grocery retailer. Um, most of all of our food is local, um, coming from the Shenandoah Valley. Um, we have our own farm um, as a family, and we actually do wholesale up into Northern Virginia. And we lost a couple restaurant clients this year um, up in Northern Virginia. So it was actually pretty nice to be able to shift some of our operations more into the store. And I think something that kind of is different for our store compared to talking to market managers and other grocers is that we actually move a lot of bulk items through Fresh Match. Um, so we still have a pretty strong canning and food preservation culture here in the Newmarket region, Shenandoah County. And we found that a lot of our EBT users and Fresh Match users geared towards buying like tomatoes, potatoes, and apples like by the bushel, which are our top three items for Fresh Match in terms of volume and sales. Um, but across the board, um, we kind of carry everything from salsa fee to cauliflower to tomatoes. Um, so it's kind of been a growing program for us to navigate. Um, we're also another unique, or I think it was, we're called like a unicorn by the extension office uh, because we also do an in-store CSA um, at the store. And so folks can use their EBT fresh match to buy our CSA. We're one of the few um, CSAs that take EBT. Uh, I think one of the only CSAs uh, that does direct retail that does fresh match. So our weekly subscription is $20. Um, there in the center photo is kind of what the average box is for 20 bucks. And so we have a lot of folks, particularly in the summer who come on their fresh match and they would get it for $10. Um, and it kind of moves quite a bit of produce um, for us. Um, but yeah, and then on the left um, is our green beans. Um, we really sold a lot this year on half bushel volume, a lot of people canning and freezing. Um, and um, on the right is another promo box. Um, one thing that I didn't know about when we were first accepting Fresh Match um, and EBT fully was about the ability to do plant sales on EBT. And then talking with Sam, who is our account manager, we could also do that as a Fresh Match option. Um, and that was pretty popular. Um, and not super popular. I mean, it was like we did it, but not I think as much as I would hope for. So I think this coming 2021 cycle is something that we're going to be pushing pretty heavily um, in terms of plant sales um, for vegetables, because that was quite popular for folks um, to be able to do that. Because um, we still have quite a big garden culture as a rural community. Um, and we're really pushing kind of gardening and then food preservation. Um, we actually never really ran out of canning jars until kind of the end of September. And once we ran out of canning jars, we really noticed a decline in our fresh match usage uh, with our clientele. And it really shifted away from bulk then and back to kind of uh, smaller unit sales. Um, 
but yeah, so that's kind of the overall everything. Sorry, I keep muting myself. Um, thanks, John. Uh, that, that was great. And I'm sure there'll be some questions for you in just a few minutes. Um, and before we get into the discussion, just wanted to, to kind of lay out a little bit of, a, of an action plan for those of you who are interested. Um, you know, obviously you may be interested in, in having a, a more direct conversation about SNAP and Virginia Fresh Match, but there's also just a lot of other work we can all be doing within our communities to build awareness um, about the need for, uh, you know, access to affordable local food. Um, if you may have a hunger action coalition or a food council uh, within your community, and I, I, we would strongly recommend that you connect with them. Um, they can be a great source of, um, of information and also, you know, sort of uh, collective impact within a, a specific area. Um, part, uh, as we said before, partnering with other organizations in your community is, is really important. In those neighborhood retailers, farmers markets, uh, your SNAP ed team, Department of Social Services, uh, Department of Health, your health system, uh, nonprofit organizations, the, the great churches and um, uh, it, within most communities who are doing so much of the feeding work. And then of course your local governments also. Every, uh, many people have a stake in, in healthy food and um, it's a challenge to, to figure out everybody, but just look around and think about who cares about these things within your within your immediate area. Um, there's also a lot of statewide groups and efforts that you can that you can connect with. Um, there's a brand new Virginia Food Access Investment Fund. Um, the, that grant program will be released by Virginia Department of Agriculture in the middle of December. Um, there's the Virginia Food System Council, which takes a, a, a very broad food system view. Um, the Virginia Food Access Coalition um, is, is a, a group of, um, of folks who are specifically interested in, in moving forward um, funding and support for innovative uh, retail approaches that, that support food access. Um, and then of course, uh, we've been talking about the Virginia Fresh Match Nutrition Incentive Network and also the Virginia Farmers Market Association has been a really critical resource in helping farmers markets um, remain open this year. So again, just a, a, a smattering of, of the, the types of organizations and the folks who are involved in, in this sort of work. And we encourage you to reach out to, to any and all. So uh, we've, we've reached the end of the formal presentation and, and now we would love to just get into a discussion. Um, we've, I've, we've suggested some discussion topics, but, uh, but Michael, do you want to pick up uh, and sort of facilitate this part? Sure. Uh, I guess the first entertain possibly some questions. Uh, I know I had a question uh, <laughs> about the sale of fresh plants. Is there any limitation or prohibition for that? Um, is it seedling? Is it pot of plants? Yeah, what this is... It's the, this is Maureen. Um, so SNAP EBT, per the federal requirements, can only be used for food. Um, and so it would have to be food producing plants. And, and that's, the, that's the EBT requirement. Uh, and then for Virginia Fresh Match, uh, we offer it for any plants that produce fruit vegetables. So tomato plants. Um, it, can be basil plants. Um, uh, there's a little discrepancy that we're trying to work through um, around herbs and whether or not herbs are considered fruits and vegetables or not. But uh, generally speaking, it would be anything that is edible or produces edible plants. And it doesn't matter how it's packaged, whether it's you know a seedling or a potted plant, as long as it's able to produce um, an edible item. And for Virginia Fresh Match, it would have to be a fruit or vegetable. Thank you. And 
please feel free to raise your hand or you know just kind of chime in if you have any questions. I had a lot of email questions and people wanted to ask me a lot of interest about it uh, and phone calls this morning and yesterday. Uh, so by all means, ask any questions you may have. I have a question. How would you become a member of the Virginia um, Fresh Match program? Is there an application process or what do you do to become involved? You just reach out to us. Um, uh, we've got our contact information at the, at the end of the, the slide deck here. Um, you know, again, the first step is, is becoming a SNAP retailer. And um, we actually, you know, Virginia Cooperative Extension can work with you to, to help with that process. Um, that's sort of the upfront part. And then once you are um, a, an authorized retailer, we're, we're happy to talk with you about um, how to extend those benefits through Virginia Fresh Match. When you say authorized retailer, what's the process that you just need to have a square or PayPal or cash register set up or? No, um, it is a, it's a pretty defined process. Um, you can go to the um, Food and Nutrition Service uh, website, um, part of the USDA, and there is a, an application process that retailers go through to become SNAP authorized. So it, okay. it is, it, you, can't, you can't just do it on a square. Um, you, you really, it has to be through FNS, yep. Okay. So usda.gov slash FNS, you can Google that and follow the uh, link to the application. Absolutely. And again, if you, if you want to reach out to, um, to folks at Virginia Cooperative Extension, your, your local snap ed agent can help you with that process. Yeah. And do you know who the local, you know who the local snap ed agents are uh, off the top of your head? Yes, um, actually, on, on out on our uh, on the Virginia Fresh Match website, there is um, a list of all the SNAP Ed agents, in, um, Very good. broken out by region. Good. Yeah, and I would also point out you had mentioned Square, and that's something that um, our store has been working with the National Grocers Association on this technology that handles Fresh Match and EBT, and there is a pretty um, technological divide um, about what contemporary POS systems accept SNAP. Mm. Um, you'll find that Square, Toast, a lot of those do not actually accept SNAP or EBT payments. Um, others like Clover, they do, but it requires certain machines. Um, so you have to pay attention. And if you're thinking about upgrading in 2021, definitely make sure your POS systems or anybody you're working with um, accepts EBT because a lot of times they don't know that they don't. Um, and when we were negotiating with the renewal this year, um, one of the tech salespeople, they thought EBT SNAP was a form of Amex credit card. And they're like, oh, of course it accepts EBT. <laughs> and we're like, no, it's not Amex. It's kind of the opposite. Right. <laughs> Let me just interject real quick. Thank, uh, thanks, John, for bringing that up because um, folks should know that the Virginia Department of Social Services does provide free wireless equipment um, uh, to direct marketing farmers and to farmers markets. And we can provide a link to that information as well. Um, there's a, a contact person at DSS who you reach out to and say, I'm interested in a piece of equipment and they will, they will try and get you hooked up. Awesome. I'm putting a couple of resources in the chat box. So one of them is we have a whole resource page on the Virginia Fresh Match um, website. And, and then there's a link to all the SNAP Ed agents and I also just posted it in there. And so SNAP Ed agents are a great partner and they're throughout the state. Uh, there are specific ones based on county or region. And what they're really tasked to do is to try and make good nutritious food more affordable, accessible, available for 
people who are on SNAP. And so they are able to work with farmers markets or small retailers or farm stands or farmers on um, providing information or resources, whether that's super simple recipe cards or cooking demonstrations. I mean, a lot of it looks different right now in COVID. Uh, but if you don't know your snap ad agent, they are an incredible wealth of knowledge and information uh, and can really help um, provide some, some additional support. And in addition to that, they could also provide some guidance to actually apply for SNAP if you, if you get stuck in the process. Oh, Danny, I have a question. One other thing that I'll say, uh, I don't know if, you know, for LEAP, we have an online marketplace uh, where we have a number of farmers that post there. We started it in response to COVID. Um, and, and then we also, you know, aggregate and post some products. And so we have figured out a way to, um, to allow Snap shoppers and uh, to, to purchase through our online system. Um, SNAP is, um, the waivers to accept SNAP online have gone through, but each retailer has to get approved separately. And so for online markets, it's probably a pretty low priority. Uh, but what, what we've done and what other, um, what other markets, and I think the same process could work for farmers is that we just have a relationship with which with each snap shopper and we give them a credit and then when they come to pick up then they run their snap card um, and so that might be somewhat um, similar to if you wanted to do a CSA model uh, leap also has an aggregated CSA and we do the same thing so we don't ask snap shoppers to pay all up front because it doesn't work financially for them because they have a set budget every single month and so it's kind of probably similar to how John Henry did it is that they just pay in weekly installments. So if it's usually $20 and they would pay 10. And so there are different ways to try and work with um, shoppers, um, uh, with SNAP shoppers um, within your own probably slightly different, you know, not, I guess there are ways to create workarounds that work for you and also the SNAP shopper. But first you have to be able to accept SNAP EPT. We posted a couple more links in the um, chat box. Uh, the application to apply for SNAP via FNS through the USDA, as well as uh, Ms. Robinson, the Virginia Equip Screening Program. How to get more uh, equipment if you needed it for uh, going through the SNAP program as well. Any more questions or comments? This has been some great information. All right, there's a question in the uh, chat for John Henry. Are there credit card processing fees that would not would, that would need to get paid uh, like a regular credit card at a farmer's market? Yes, yeah, so uh, for us, that was again, another like part of our POS negotiations. And typically the uh, fee for accepting EBT uh, through most POSs is eight to 10 cents. Uh, that we found when we were upgrading our systems. I'm not sure if you go with the state's equipment, um, if that is removed. Um, they do pick up that cost, John. Okay, yeah. Uh, but yeah, for us, it's like eight cents a transaction. Thanks, John. 
Yeah, one other thing I just know, just um, that any SNAP purchases, you are not allowed to, um, you know, there's no taxes on it. So that's just, um, it's just something to be aware of. And, and that that's something that they would go through, you know, like when you apply to be uh, a SNAP retailer, they lay all of that information out. They tell you what's eligible, what isn't eligible. Um, that's why it's kind of a, a longer process. Um, so once you become a SNAP authorized retailer, whether you're a farmer or a general store or a grocery store or a farmer's market, there are specific regulations that you have to follow. Um, but there's also information about it. Uh, it's just, that's one of the things that you have to remember is that you can't charge um, sales tax on SNAP purchases. Yeah, are there limitations in terms of the products, uh, like maybe a value added product versus fresh, fresh vegetables versus a prepared good? For, for SNAP, there isn't. They, um, they have to be, well, there are SNAP eligible items, items that aren't SNAP eligible, for example, are hot foods. You could have value added foods that are canned and not SNAP eligible. Uh, but like if it's um, hot green beans, that isn't SNAP eligible because it can't be ready to eat because it's for like at home consumption, not um, in, in building type consumption. Um, but for Virginia Fresh Match, all of the incentives are, are limited to fruits and vegetables. So someone can use their SNAP card, for example, like a John Henry store, and they could buy dry nuts with their SNAP card, but that purchase wouldn't be eligible for the half off. But if they buy tomatoes, then that purchase is eligible for the half off. So, um, uh, but those are all things that, at least in terms of Virginia Fresh Match, we would go over in detail. Um, uh, but Virginia Fresh Match is limited to the discount being applied to fruits and vegetables. Then would that include like a prepared salad versus uh, or some kale chips? Uh, prepared salad, if it's cold and packaged or kale chips, those are both eligible for SNAP, but not Virginia Fresh Match. Virginia Fresh Match has to be, you can't have anything added to it. You can't have cheese on it. You can't have salt on it. It's just fruits and vegetables. Gotcha. Um, another question. Oh, yeah, so so Leslie, um, it really, and Elizabeth, I'll let you speak to this more, but at least for us, um, at one point we had two different pieces of equipment. We used Square, um, and then we also had a machine, but once we started using Clover, which is one of the approved um, state-issued pieces of equipment, we just added a debit and credit card um, uh, account to our Clover. So then we use the same machine uh, for all of our transactions, SNAP, debit, credit, but we pay, you know, we have a separate contract for the, the debit and credit that, and those fees aren't covered by um, the state. And at the markets that I work with, um, we actually still use, uh, we use the Clover and then we use Square. So it's a, a sort of a two part system. Um, and, and again, the, the credit portion of this is, is, is purely optional. And it's something that farmers markets started doing early in this program because we wanted to make sure that there was no stigma attached to using tokens. Um, so by offering it to, to all customers as well as SNAP customers and having different types of tokens around the market, um, we, we, we hope that that would uh, remove any stigma. Um, be, once Square and those kinds of um, of applications became more prominent, that that's a, a much much smaller piece of um, of the business, and and at some point we'll probably phase it out, uh, because almost all of the vendors can now run uh, credit card transactions um, at, at their own booths. Yeah, and um, I Lisa is asking a question. Um, about CSAs and so at least for LEAP, what we do with our CSA is that we charge it weekly um, instead of asking for the full payment upfront. Most people can't do that, but in order to um, take some of our risk into account, what we actually ask for is a, 
it's a deposit. So it's a one week deposit. So, and then every week they pay for the next week. So they're always one week out. So if there's a no show, then they've already paid for that. Um, so that's kind of how we've, we've balanced um, the traditional idea of the CSA of paying it up front, but then um, also acknowledging that that doesn't work if you have a limited set of funds every month. Uh, and that's worked well for us uh, so far um, that uh, people just pay one week out. Great, thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah, and I would note for us, when we worked with the USDA on for us at our store location for our CSA, was that they can't pay up front because that's technically illegal because with EBT, you have to be paying for the items in front of you uh, at okay. checkout. Um, so for us, it was required that um, there is no pay up front. Um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, John, and that might just be something for us to talk about offline because I thought that there was like, if as long as you get it within nine days or something, you there can be some upfront payment like it has to so it couldn't be like three months out but if it's paid um if the food is is received within a certain time period um but that's that's one of those snap regulations that can probably be interpreted a couple of different ways but i will i will look at that on my end because i hadn't heard um because i thought we were we were within the requirements how we had structured that um but there it's uh, it is federal language, um, and so it can be confusing and also change. So you should ask your FNS number before you go through that, and I will look into it to make sure we are doing it correctly. Great questions. Anybody have any more questions? John, I don't know if you, um, you know, since you did accept SNAP in January and then you started the Virginia Fresh match later on, if you saw a, a bigger increase in uh, SNAP shoppers coming to pay with EBT once you had the incentive. I know that in grocery stores and in farmers markets, um, you know, that, that SNAP shoppers don't come um, they come more when there's a, a, an, an additional incentive than when it's just SNAP EBT, but I don't know what um, uh, what you found in, in, in more of a general store format. Yeah, we definitely um, push um, SNAP Fresh Match pretty heavily, the Fresh Match ex explanation, and um, we find that most people come in for produce, and I think if I remember our data correctly, is that actually produce sales are pretty high up in our EBT sales. Like it's neck and neck 50-50, which is pretty different compared to a lot of other traditional grocery outlets um, where fresh produce is not up to 50% of a ticket. Um, but yeah, um, a lot of folks um, heard about our Fresh Match program and that kind of was a bigger educator um, and incentive for folks to also learn about us accepting EBT. Uh, so it definitely has worked, I think, in our favor. John, can you talk a little bit about how uh, the kind of partnerships that you formed in the community to let people know that you had these programs? Um, yeah, so we um, kind of got started in the traditional marketing kind of through Fresh Match was a lot more physical uh, base media um, with rack cards and whatnot. And so we did give out rack cards to uh, social services here in Shenandoah County over in Northern Rockingham. And that was fairly successful, um, but actually our most successful way of getting the word out about us accepting Fresh Match was a couple radio ads that we ran. Um, people really learned about us through that. And on top of that, as a store in general, historically we donate and fund a couple of food pantries and the directors of like the three local food pantries, we 
gave them posters and whatnot. Uh, the physical media and they included those in some of their food pantry pickup days and that was a pretty big uh, lead in and there is a quite a, a popular food pantry here in the town of Newmarket uh, where folks kind of learned about the program from that. Thanks. And Megan has a, a question about grocery stores and marketing about EBT. And I'll just speak to, um, you know, that was something that we talked about really early on and having a lot of different places to use Virginia Fresh Match within one community. Is it competitive or can we have it be collaborative? And so um, at least right now we have some marketing funds that we can use and provide to the region or specific outlets. And so what, what a lot of regions have done instead of each store or each market or each farm stand having its own marketing materials, we create one that has like five throughout the region and lists all the places. So then people can um, look at where all the options are and then figure out what works best for them. And, um, and that's worked really well because then, you know, people have more choice and more information and then it's the same message and the same marketing across, um, across the whole community. And so, <clears throat> and even if it's a grocery, like the co-op in Harrisonburg, they do a lot of joint promotion with the farmer's market in Harrisonburg. Um, there are nice ways to, uh, for different, um, places to support each other because um, they might have different things different times of year or when if one is open on some days and another one open on another day uh, just having that collective message I think is really important as opposed to um, doing it as an either or option. Did anyone have any other questions? Uh, well, if there's no more questions, I want to thank Maureen, Elizabeth, and John Henry for this great information. Hopefully, uh, Elizabeth, we can get together and do it again in the spring. We had a, very, a lot of interest for this. Um, it'd be good to revisit this as the markets open back up in 2021. Yeah, yeah, and I guess, you want to say? yeah, one other thing, you know, if you are a farmer who sells at farmer's markets and those farmer's markets don't currently accept EBT or Virginia Fresh Match, um, you know, you can ask about, ask a market manager about it. Some, sometimes a market manager may not know or it feels too cumbersome or they may not know about something, but farmers at farmer's markets, you know, we have a number of farmers where this is you know, 10 to 20% of all their sales at the farmer's market is coming from EBT and tokens. And so it isn't, it, it's a, it can be a very significant source of income for um, farmers at a farmer's market, especially if you're a produce farmer. Um, and, and if there aren't any other options for that. And so, um, you know, it's good to, to even at least voice that, um, with a farmer's market or with other community partners just to let them know that this is something and we'd be happy to work with them. That's a great point, Maureen. Um, everyone needs to just encourage everybody to be, to, uh, to be involved with these food access programs. They are, they are definitely making a difference. But we really appreciate everybody's time and, uh, and attention today. If you've got additional questions, um, please feel free to reach out to us. And um, Michael, we thank you. And, and again, we're happy to come back and, and chat some more.